So this is going to be a video on uh, electronic reliability and temperature, basically. Um, I have this Phillips bulb, and it came with a, a really low warranty. And I was wondering if that was because there's very little confidence on the part of this manufacturer regarding its design, or if they decided to lower the warranty to uh, almost zero just so they could offer the product at a lower possible price. Um, let me insert a, a thermograph of this bulb when I was using it. And uh, you can see over here is basically the hottest part of the bulb when it was standing up. And uh, the problem with the thermograph, of course, it only looks at the outside shell of the part. What I really want to do is take a look inside and uh, see what the exact dye temperature is. And from that, I can actually get some reliability tables and start to estimate how, how well this particular assembly performs. So the go-to component will be, of course, a thermocouple. This one's a K-type, and there's, of course, the thermometer that goes with it. This particular thermocouple is really well suited to this task because it's a really small end to it, and even the cable is very skinny. Um, and that's important because we need to drill a hole into this bulb for the cable to come out. And I want to disturb the assembly as little as possible because I want to create an accurate measurement uh, of the LED temperature. Um, and I want to reduce it as little air as possible. Okay, so I've drilled a little tiny hole and that's sufficient to allow the thermocouple to pass through. And the next thing I need to worry about is getting enough thermal transfer between the thermocouple and the LED. Um, and to do that I'm going to uh, put some thermal compound on the LED. Now I was actually hoping to use uh, actually a thermally conductive uh, epoxy, but unfortunately my local electronics store had sold out when I went down today to look for some. So I'm going to dab this on. Uh, the challenge here is that I need to still somehow mechanically secure the wire uh, so it uh, doesn't move as the assembly is uh, screwed back into the uh, lamp base. Okay, well the uh, thermocouple is in place. I'm going to use some Kapton tape to secure it. I also need to use some Kapton along the edges here. Of course I had to saw the assembly apart to... Uh, get the bulb uh, disassembled for the uh, teardown video. I'll tape it back together here and uh, let's see where the temperature rise is. Okay, well it's all together. Let's uh, turn it on and see how hot it gets. Okay, uh, it's been running for quite some time. It's stabilized now at about 76 degrees Celsius. Uh, when I started, uh, the room temperature was about 27, so it's doing about a 50 degree rise uh, from ambient. Okay, let's repeat the experiment. I drilled a little hole in this bulb here. This is the older 75 watt equivalency from uh, Philips, and uh, let's measure the temperature rise on this product. Okay, it's been ready for quite some time, and uh, you can see the temperature here is quite a bit less, 63.7 degrees. And uh, we'll pull up some reliability charts, which show us just how dramatic only about 20 degrees difference will make in terms of the reliability of an electronic component. To figure out reliability, you have to get a chart from the manufacturer which lists uh, these parameters. Now, I'm not entirely certain what Philips is using for these bulbs. I'm not even sure if they use their uh, LumaLED subsidiary product or if they're just buying something uh, from another party vendor. However, here's a, uh, here's a typical chart. Now, this is not the chart for the LEDs in this bulb, but they all have this similar structure. And there's sort of two things you want to look at. You want to look at basically the temperature line. Then you want to look at the number of hours before the... Uh, bulbs uh, cumulative light output decreases. Um, now you can see here, I'll just highlight the 105 degree curve. You can see of course it's the bottom here. It's a log graph on the bottom in terms of hours and of course it drops off uh, quite uh, dramatically. Uh, the mid curve at 85 degrees centigrade uh, looking a little bit better. And then of course at 55 you can see it's uh, almost a flat line out to a uh, number of tens of thousands of hours. So. Uh, you get sort of this dramatic exponential function. Um, that's true of all electronics. LEDs are not unique. Uh, there's an exponential function uh, with relation of temperature and uh, reliability. So, um, an interesting, uh, interesting problem that they're facing. Okay, well, um, definitely a larger temperature rise from what I measured on this bulb compared to its predecessor. And that should lead to a lower uh, service life, which may explain why the warranty of this bulb is quite short. Uh, when I look at uh, Philips' main competitor, they've also tried this assembly where they put uh, a circuit board in, essentially acting like the heat sink, uh, heavily plated. And uh, they've made one major difference, so they put some fins into their uh, bulb, so basically they can create an airflow through it. And this Cree bulb, by the way, has quite a larger uh, warranty period onto it. And what if the strategy of uh, taking a heat sink, which is fine, but then enclosing it uh, with plastics like this is leading to the, the real high thermal rise? Now, the Cree bulb's not perfect either. They didn't conformally coat the electronics, so any bugs, debris, and dust which collects onto the circuit board here uh, has the potential of eventually shorting things out, causing a failure. So 
Uh, it's a really interesting little uh, side branch of uh, LED bulb design.